So I keep mentioning to you about the work that we're having done outside and I have shown you it in previous videos but I haven't actually talked about it much. So I thought I'd give you a little look at the progress that's been made so far. So this is our patio area and if you see on the floor there, there is a blue frisbee and up until that area this is where the patio stopped being good and usable. The following sort of three slabs were going on a slope where the earth underneath was gradually moving back into the main garden area and then the next three and a half slabs these are new this is a sort of new extension to the patio and we've had a new retaining wall built and where this wall is there used to be uh, wooden posts that we had sort of hammered into the ground and then we dug out a trench behind and filled back filled it with concrete and it was really strong for quite a few years but because of the weight of all of the earth down here and further back this had sort of gradually pushed it sort of out and some of the posts had started sort of bowing some of them had gone rotten so we thought nope time to tackle it so we've had this really strong retaining wall built and as we move along this is where the steps are going to go down into the garden they're still being constructed at the moment and then you can see all the way along and you'll get a good idea of how big this area is now we've got the wall going all the way along and this wall has actually got metal rods in it as well so it has been tied so it's very very strong indeed there's still a little bit of finishing off to do in this area here and also these slabs here they're looking they've sort of dropped a little bit with all the rain we had so they're going to be sort of evened up a little bit but it's just a really big area if i come over in this corner here you can get to see it from the other viewpoint and it's just a big expanse really really pleased with it now we're going to obviously put some furniture on here I might, in this area here, I might put a small workshop in this area here as well for another special project that I'm planning. Haven't decided on that yet, but it's probably my intention to do that if I can sort of get clearance to do it from the boss. But that is it. That is the work we've been having done and it's nearing completion, should be finished in the next couple of days. And you know the ironic thing about the new patio area is that I hate the heat I hate the summer, I get all hot, I'd much rather be indoors, and that patio is an absolute heat trap. Now I just realised that by the time you're watching this video, I will have already uploaded my Ultimaker 2 3D printer video. So I thought I'd just give you another little look over in this corner here. I am actually going to be relocating the printer very soon because this is my main recording area with the studio lights sort of left and right. So I'm going to be relocating this onto another desk and doing all of my printing there. So when you see me do future projects, it won't be here. Now I just want to show you some of the other bits and pieces that came with the printer or I've purchased afterwards and also tell you a little bit more about my experience so far with this amazingly awesome machine. So first of all, just to clear this up, this isn't part of the Ultimaker 2 purchase. This is my weekend reading. So that's that cleared up. And then over here, uh, this didn't come with the Ultimaker 2, but these come in very, very handy. Uh, when I've printed something and needed to just get a little bit of the sort of plastic off, then little tiny tweezers come in very handy. And also, just to update you on the Ultimaker 2, when I was first using it, I did have the nozzle um, get sort of all block, blocked up in, in this sort of heated area just underneath here. See the little gold bit at the back there? So I had to remove these little tiny blue uh, sort of clasps and then remove this tube here and then pull the filament out. So to remove these, I used my little handy tweezers. And these are just very, very thin nosed uh, tweezers which uh, came in very handy. So if you're gonna do 3D printing, you're gonna need a few little extra pieces like this. Now, I've also purchased this. This is a power bond. And the reason I purchased this is because in the printer itself, I can't really show you very easily. Let's try and put the camera in here. You can see here, the, these are the LED light strips that light up the inside of the printer. And right up the top in that corner there, there's some wiring. And that wiring seems to rub on some of the sort of the cogs and wheels. So I'm just going to put a little sort of sticky piece of that double sided tape in there and try and get it back out of the way. So moving on, what else do we get? We've got this, this user manual. Let me pop this over here. 
and I'll show you this. This is amazingly set out and it guides you through everything from just plugging the Ultimaker 2 in and then it goes on to working your way through the sort of setup wizard, leveling the build plate, uh, putting the filament in, absolutely everything you're going to need to know all the way through to doing your first print and also a maintenance section in the back. So really very, very good uh, user manual included knife which is my normal unboxing knife this is just here from where i was unpacking the filament i've also got a ruler which was here just to measure something out to check it was building as expected because i started a build on here and i thought mm, that doesn't look like the dimensions i set so i just held the ruler up just to see if it was right and it was this here i use these to just snip the ends of the filament before i load it into the machine because sometimes they're a little bit sort of uh, wonky or not straight you also get included inside the box with the Ultimaker 2 this. This is simply some grease. And in the maintenance section, I think it says every three to six months, you're meant to sort of grease up certain parts of the machine. So they include that as well. You also get USB cable. Now you don't print to it via USB. You print via the SD card slot. So you put your files on here and then load them onto the Ultimaker 2 that way. This is here purely for if you do a firmware upgrade on the printer. And then this is what I used in a little bit of maintenance I did as well. That wasn't included. And you also get three little Allen keys. And these are used for if you need to take anything apart. So I haven't had to use those yet. And then you also get a glue stick. Now I was unsure whether to use this, but in the instruction manual, it does say that when you're uh, doing a build or printing something to put a thin film of glue on the heated plate and it just means that whatever you're printing adheres properly and stays in place I thought that the heated bed helped with that but apparently I just did a little bit more research on it and the heated bed is really to uh, stop the edges sort of turning up and you getting any sort of warping in your print and you still do need to, to use this just to hold things in place that's really cool they include that and then these are the three filaments I've got so far. Now I'm pretty sure when you buy an Ultimaker 2, you get a roll of filament anyway. So this is the blue filament I think you would normally get because that seems to be the Ultimaker color. And then Ultimaker were very, very kind to actually include an orange because they know that Geekanoid's favorite color and indeed my favorite color is orange. And also this really cool gold color, which I intend to use for another print project very very soon so overall oh and one other thing almost forgot i showed you in a previous video i showed you some ziploc bags and i said i bet you can't guess what these are for and this is what the ziploc bags were for so this is just purely to keep the filament in there and to keep any moisture out and i've got little silica gel packs in each one as well just so that when they're stored they're stored in sort of optimum con conditions really so I don't know if it's necessary, but hey-ho, I've done that anyway. It keeps them nice and neat. Actually, a big, big shout-out to uh, Jerry, Barnacle is Nerdgasm, because I asked him what size Ziploc bags I need, and he said get the one-gallon ones. So a big, big thank you to Jerry for giving me that advice. In fact, whilst I'm on the subject of thanking Jerry, in the run-up to getting the Ultimaker 2, I looked at a lot of different options and I asked Jerry for lots of advice and he's so, so kind. Every single question I asked, he answered either via email. In fact, he sent me a very, very long email a couple of months back and uh, he's just a real good bloke. So a big, big thank you to Jerry, Barnacle is Nerdgasm on YouTube. And that is it for today's video. Just to, to close out on the 3D printing subject, you'll have seen this in the other videos that I've uploaded about it and I'm super pleased. It is a very, very good product. Totally geeking out about it. I've got big plans for what I'm gonna do with the 3D printer, and I'll share that with you all on the channel, of course. So that's it for my Friday. By the time you watch this, you'll be midway through your weekend, so I hope you're having a fantastic weekend. Thank you very much for watching my video. I really do appreciate it. If you can, please do leave me some comments, and I'll see you all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. If you want to see another video of mine, please do click the annotation on the top of your screen now. And also, you can click the annotation on the bottom of your screen and subscribe to the Geekanoids channel.
Thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time.